shows. We said that evolution was a shifting of traits and gene frequencies in populations and that it was caused by natural selection. That's evolution in a nutshell. And today, by the way, is the 26th of October, 2017. That evolution was a shifting of traits and gene frequencies in populations caused by natural selection. So we've talked about what it is. We've talked about the process that allows it to happen, the natural selection. So now what we want to do is back up and look at what the evidence for it is. What's the evidence for the process? So we have some starting assumptions. Okay? You guys are familiar with Earth age, about four and a half billion years old, 4.56. Um, you know, close, you could round it to 4.6, 4.5, about four and a half billion years old. Um, so that is one starting assumption, and that's supported by um, evidence from the moon, that's supported by, do you know that that's, that's part of how we figured out how old the Earth is? Moon rocks. Because we can um, radio date rocks from the moon. We don't have rocks that old on Earth, but the moon was split off from the Earth pretty early in the process. And so the moon rocks, when we radio date those, give us a sense of how long Earth has been cooling. So anyway, we've got the assumption about Earth age. Um, based on fossil evidence, we are assuming that organisms of some kind have been on Earth for most of that time. And we're assuming that idea of macroevolution, that all the organisms, the diversity of life forms that we see come from a common ancestor, okay? And that, actually, that quote is directly from the Ohio State Academic Content Standards. Diversity of life seen on Earth um, derives from, you know, significant lengths of time and evolution from common ancestors. So, okay, those are our, our baseline assumptions. So now with those things in mind, what pieces of evidence do you think there are to back up the idea that, yeah, all this stuff we got out there, all that amazing diversity of life evolved from common ancestors. Well, it's a long time. How much evidence could there be laying around? What did a few people mention? A lot of people said they weren't aware of any. A few people said fossils. fossils. As a matter of fact, there are three major lines of evidence. And the first one of those is the fossil record. The first one of those is the fossil record. And I have a picture of a horse up here. Um, about three million years ago, we see what, what would now look like a horse that you would look at and recognize and go, hey, that looks like a horse. You know, not a totally modern horse, but enough, close enough that you would be able to, to pick it out. But when we go back about 25 million years, we see something that you would look at and think, well, that's a funny looking, is that a, is that a horse? Is it? I don't, I, I'm not sure. And if we go back about 35 million years ago, you're looking at something that looks even stranger to a modern eye. And if we go all the way back to about 50 million years ago, frankly, they are adorable. We have these knee-high horses. They don't even probably come up to your knee. They're like 36 centimeters tall, 38. My hand span is 20 centimeters. They are less than two. Ha! If we go with the whole hands high, I don't even know how that works. I'm not a horse person. Um, but they're like that tall. How adorable is that? Don't put a saddle on it. You'll break its back. They're cute. Um, about seven years ago, there was a traveling exhibit at the Carnegie Museum of Natural History in Pittsburgh on the horse. And the exhibit was just called The Horse. And it was on loan from the Smithsonian in D.C., I think. And it was really neat because it was the evolutionary and cultural history of the horse. So if you're into horses, you would have absolutely gone nuts. I like horses, but I'm, I've never been, I've never, I haven't had a whole lot of experience with horses. But I still thought it was cool. And one of the things they had was an area where you could walk through the skeletons of the various fossil ancestors of horses. And they showed pretty much this, which is why I picked it, because it's a, it's a great place to talk about this. That fossil record gives us a sense of what distant organisms in the distant past looked like. And sometimes they don't look a whole lot like their modern relatives. 
Now, we used to just look at them and look at shapes and structures and stuff, and we can do a little bit more than that in some cases now, but um, the fossil record is our first line of evidence. So the fossil record is just all the fossils that are left around, which leads us to this question, what are fossils? Who here has ever seen a fossil? Okay, I, I should be kicked in the shins because I have a beautiful fossil that sits in the garden in the flower bed right outside of where I parked my car. And it was my intention to grab it this morning on my way to the car, but I was juggling coffee and my lunchbox and my backpack and everything else, and I didn't. So I promise to bring it tomorrow or somebody can kick me in the shins. I will bring it. Um, you know what, Braxton, if you're my volunteer, I will make sure to bring it tomorrow. <laughs> I'm going to write it on my hand in marker because I, I believe that you would um, enforce your end of the agreement. Um, fossils can be one of two things. They can be actual chunks of an organism or they can be the impression of an organism. And when we go to the Carnegie, which I'm now thinking might be the week after Thanksgiving, the week when we come back, um, you will see a lot of fossils of both kinds, um, both actual pieces of organisms I, I'm always impressed by the actual dinosaur bones in the dinosaur exhibit. These are actual bones from living things that I can't imagine. And they also have reconstructed bone segments, but they have large, large um, organisms that are, you know, constructed of actual bone. So the way you get fossils for the most part is you have to bury an organism in very fine sand um, or silt. And it tends, they tend to form nicely when you have um, sort of damp conditions. So like the edges of lakes and streams, swamps are great um, because swamps tend to decay all the soft tissue. So the soft tissue is the muscle, the skin, the organs. Um, the hard tissue is the bones and you know, if you bury something in a swamp or a wetland or a pond, the soft tissue's gone pretty fast, but the bones tend to get preserved. Um, the other way to get them is volcanic activity. If something gets buried in muddy ash, that tends to preserve it. Um, and this also, now, the one picture up there, I have two things that are impressions of organisms. Let me number them. One, two, three, four. Four. Which two, vote with your fingers, which two are impressions? One and three? Okay, one and three were the first votes I saw. Yeah, and here we have an impression of an ancient fish, and this looks like a leaf from a plant of some sort. Um, two of these are actual organisms, and of course this leaves two and four. So we all recognize this friendly face. Okay, it's not so friendly. Um, I, I accuse you guys of pretending to be this organism all the time. How many of you have been called T-Rex? <laughs> um, okay, you know what, now we just have to, I'm going to pause this for us. The T-Rex is actual preserved bone. What is that last fossil? I didn't wear them today. Darn it, I'm screwing up on every count. What is that last fossil? It's amber. I have a bunch of you did, which is wonderful. What's amber? I have an amber necklace that I meant to wear today. What is it? It is sap. It is like pine sap. Has anybody ever gotten pine sap on their hands? Uh huh. Yes. Sticky, messy, um, tastes weird if you try to lick it off. Don't ask me how I know that. Um, you know, you got to try everything once. Um, yeah, good. Thanks, Hannah. We're simpatico, you and I. Um, so if you get a bug stuck in amber and then that amber hangs around for a few million years, it will harden into an actual gemstone. How many of you saw Jurassic Park? Okay. We're not going to watch it in here, but we might watch it on the bus on the way to the museum. Um, the premise of Jurassic Park is, of course, that they harvest what? Dinosaur DNA from a what? From a mosquito caught in what? Amber. Amber! Yeah. Isn't it like a cane that he's holding? I don't know. I, it's been a long time. I, I actually don't like the movie very much. We'll watch it on the bus only because 
I'll tune out and watch the scenery. Um, so yeah, amber can have fossils in it. Amber is often referred to as fossilized resin, but we, we typically, in this case, are thinking more about fossils in amber in terms of insects that are trapped in amber. There was just recently, and this came up for sale in China, I forget, it went for some insane amount of money, there was a vertebrate fossil in amber. I'll have to look it up. Um, it was a tiny little vertebrate organism of some sort that had gotten trapped in resin, dead, and was fossilized. I'll, I'll find it in the last few minutes. Okay, so that's what fossils are. And we know that the fossil record is evidence of evolution, but that doesn't really answer the question. So, I mean, yeah, you can recite, like, uh, the fossil record is evidence for evolution, but that doesn't really show you how it's used by geologists and paleontologists. So we are now going to start a film called Morphed When Whales Had Legs.